Hi and welcome to this video in Hillman Holt. Today I'm focusing on iTrain. I'm trying to set up iTrain to work on my heritage loop so I can move a loco from A to B. That's the general plan. So what I'm going to do is show you through how I how I set it up. I've watched lots of really good videos. There's a fantastic series. I'll put a link in the description below. Thoroughly recommend you watch it. But this is my quick and easy, quick and dirty way of setting up train controller. So here's my here's my layout so far. This is my 009 loop. It's already set up and done. What I'm going to do is this is the heritage loop, which goes around here and has one, two, three turnouts. A left-hand turn, a right-hand turn, and a double slip. I'm gonna set up blocks all the way around. So, how do we do that? Having set up your original layout, you then need to go into switchboard, which is the editing version. So here we are. And you can see where we'll start. I'm gonna keep the numbering very basic. I'm going to go block one, two, three, four, five, just for, just for ease. So what I need to do first, let's, let's start with the first block. I'm going to start from here. It's going to be this piece going up, and it's going to reach up to this turn out here. There are three things we need in any block. We need a direction arrow, which is pointing to the direction we're going. We need a block, which holds the information, and we need a feedback loop, which connects to my Lodi system. So that's the first bits. Now I need to group these. So I select the cells, G for group, connect this lot as well. Got to be careful you don't get others connected and then to stop grouping click anywhere else and hit G right that's now done to set that up I'm going to do it as we go so it's easier go into the feedback and it asks for the basic details here so the details are this is going to be block one I'm just going to call it one and one and it is an occupancy block. So it's looking for an occupancy detection from my control system. And on my S88, that is block 5.4. It just is what it is. That's what it is. Okay. The length of this block, 240 centimeters. That's it. You can see it's now created it in this list of blocks here. If I now go into the block item instead of the feedback item I'll call it one and one just for simple simplicity it's picked up the length from the feedback item we looked at so now it's this free track and the really important thing to click is autofill I'll do that again at the end just to make sure autofill and save that's it one other thing we go back into we go back into um, options for a second I want this to be unidirectional, so just going one way around. So I'm just selecting that unidirectional. That's it. Okay, done. Two, you have to attach a piece of empty track next to a turnout. So what I need to do is put my feedback sensor in, collect them, group them, click somewhere else, and G, that's now done. So let's edit this. Just for simplicity, I'm going to call it 2, occupancy, and the address for this one is 6.4, and the length of that turnout is 13. Done. Next, let's do block 3. Block 3 is the section that goes around, it's the loop. Um, so let's pop that in, let's put that in, I'll go there, we'll add that there and I will put in feedback on the curved one there there we go 
Now, something to note, the dots need to point to the next block in the logical order of the loop. So I need to rotate that round so it's now facing the same direction as the arrow. And now I need to group these again, so let's group them. It goes to, let's go to about here, oops, let's go to about here. Group, missing that last piece there, group, click elsewhere, done. Okay, let's set it up. So, um, we need to go into the feedback, fees, three, three, it's occupancy, for me that's 6.5. And this is 113 centimeters long, that, that little loop. Okay. Let's go in here. I want to make that unidirectional. Give it the name. It's free track. It's picked up the length already. That's it. Autofill done. That's block three done. See, it's not as difficult as it necessarily seems. It's quite intimidating. Let's put my arrow, the block, the feedback, and again you see this facing the wrong way, so let's turn that round. Let's create the block, let's group them, group them, group them. This one goes up towards my viaduct, I'm going to finish it there. Click elsewhere, G, done. Feedback. This one is four. It is occupancy. The length of four is two meters forty seven, and the address is six point three. Let's go into here, and we're doing four, four. It is track, and I want it one directional autofill. Done. Next one. Only a few more to go. Let's put in an arrow. Let's put in the feedback loop. Let's put in the block. And now let's group them. Now this one goes all the way around to my turnout. So let's select that. Okay, click elsewhere, G, done. Let's set it up. What am I calling this? Five. Five. Occupancy. The length is 163. My channel is 7.1. Five. That's five. Five it is free tracks. Picks up the 163. I want to make it one directional. Autofill done. Next. Right. Now we come to the more tricky bit. You'll see that I left a blank space because you need to attach a, uh, a blank space to a turnout for the feedback sensor. So let's connect those, group them. You'll see the channel is blue, so it shows it's part of a turnout. And then we just do the same. This is six. It's occupancy, the length of this is 21.5, and my occupancy sensor is 8.5. That's that one done. Need to give the point a name as well, the turnout. Oh, it's opened over there. 6.6, six, that's already done. Nothing to do there. Right, I've told it that I want the initial state to be straight. I also can't remember which turnout motor it is right now, so I'm just leaving it as none, which means it's manually controlled. Doesn't matter. Middle block. Uh, for space, I'll put the arrow in the middle. I'm going to get rid of this middle block. This is fire alarm test, sorry about that. This is not necessary. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squash it, but as it's still there now, I need to keep it there. Group those. Let's do the same as we've been doing all along. Seven, seven, occupancy. It is 16 centimeters, my point. 
I was attach it to the previous turnout. And this way I can release a, um, a block detection section as well. Look at the direction, turn that round. Let's go in and give it a name, 77. It is free track. I'm going to tell it it's a short block. Do you need to? I don't know. Autofill, <laughs> done. Last one. Again, pop that in. Connect the two, group, bang. This is number eight. I think we're getting the idea now. Occupancy. And it is 9.3. No, that's centimeters. It's 33 centimeters and it's addressed 9.3. Okay, make sure that's got a name. Same, I've set it up that it's through my shift commander. I don't know which one it is right now. I think it's 26, but it's not what we're doing today. Um, right. That's it. Now, I'm going to go around. Whether you need to do this or not, I don't know. Just auto-fill them all, just to make sure it's picking up everything it needs to do. Um, and then I'll show you what it looks like as well. And run all of that. Okay, now if you look in here, see the previous block was that double slip 8, which then went to track 7. Great. The next one is Turn out two, followed by track three. So you can see that's worked. Last thing to do, connect. It's done it already. This is just to make sure that all the pieces of track are connected the right way. That's just to make sure. Done. So apply, save, OK. And you can see we now have them all set up here. And you can see that that is brighter red because I've got a loco on it. I've actually put my Hornby 423 which is the new one because the speed profile is so rubbish that it, it goes to 0 to 100 immediately and 100 to 0 immediately, which means it's great for testing. <laughs> if you have a logo, a loco that likes to have a very slow decrease in speed to stop, I haven't got around to setting that up or working out how to do that yet. So I'm using one that's very quick, start, stop, start, stop. So let me now connect, get the camera running so we can see what happens. Right, you should be able to spy that that 423 single unit is sitting up on the embankment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show how we can do a, a basic route. So let's, let's tell it it's there because this is new. So I have to take the train, pop it on the block and say which direction it is. Okay, so it's facing that way. Right, it is now there. It now knows it's there. Great. So how do we move it? Click on 423. Let's send it to that block, and I want it to go in that direction. Route. It sets the route, as you can see, in yellow. And there goes the train, whizzing around. It's coming down here, it's now in this block. It's going to come into this block across the viaduct. It's now in this block, and it stopped. Magic. Let's now move it back to where we started. No, let's take it up here it down, root, there it goes, see the speed straight up to 100, <laughs> goes up the viaduct and it stops, brilliant. There are lots of other really cool fancy things you can do which I haven't played with yet. I need to set the gradient of these because they are slopes. Um, I need to set where you stop it. I need to put speed profiles in around the points so you don't go across a double slip at the maximum speed. All sorts of junk. But in terms of just setting up very basic blocks, running a loco around it, setting up auto routes, just wanted to cover that. Because if I do that for the rest of the track now, it means I've immediately got a bit of playability. I can set things up and running and moving around um, ready for um, just to keep it running while I'm while I'm playing and doing the rest of the scenics. I hope that was mildly interesting. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll speak to you on the next video. Thanks for watching.